The Max Weinberg 7. Max Andrew, seven. how are you? I'm good. You know, we should address something right here at the top of the show. Mm -hmm. Clear the air, if you will. Right. Uh, I like to come out before the show and sort of say hi to the audience. <laughs> it's a... Uh, now, this isn't one of those... I'm going somewhere. This is not some device where I get to make the studio audience applaud and alienate the folks at home. I'm talking to you. The, uh, my family, they're the ones watching. Uh, I come out, it's very subdued. You've seen right. me do this. I just sort of say hi to the folks, tell them to look at the exit signs, you know, alert them about mm -hmm. no smoking. Right, right. And then quietly leave. And, you know, tonight I was goofing around a bit and I spotted a very attractive woman in the audience and uh, um, came on to her a bit, I think. <laughs> Got a little carried away. Gave her the patented, you know, right. which I stole from Bob Hope. Uh, and, um, you know, I'm t I think there's good chemistry here. And then I get a little carried away and I say, where's your husband? She says, he's not here. I say, yeah, well, if he were here, I would kick his ass. Right. And I swear to God, she says, well, actually, he's, he's backstage at your show. And I realize then that I'm talking to Mrs. George Brett. And uh, so uh, I hope, you, do you think that there's going to be bad blood here tonight? I can't wait to see. <laughs> Andy, look at the way she's eyeing me. <laughs> Leave me alone, you're married! <laughs> Constantly bothering me. <laughs> Husband's gonna be out here. I know. Turn around. <laughs> This is a problem wherever I go. This is every commercial break on the show. He does this. It's always somebody that he swears is hitting on him. Yeah. When I was off my medication for a while, it was a hat rack. Yeah. And I tell you, it really likes me, Andy. Conan. <laughs> I don't know. My next guest and I just learned yesterday that he will be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame this July. He is the only player ever to win batting titles in three decades, one season hitting 390. Please welcome Kansas City Royal Hall of Famer and I hope a really good friend of mine, George Brett. <laughs> I have to change my pants now. <laughs> she's cute, isn't she? She's really, I mean, she's all right, you know. <laughs> Where's she at? Where's uh, she's she right at? up there, actually. She, is, yeah. she keeps making eyes at me, but, you know. Hey, she's only human. <laughs> She's been, hey, she's been Man, saying you're good. Hey, she's been saying she's been thinking about moving to New York. <laughs> Are you married? Uh, no, no. Honey? <laughs> <laughs> this is going to get real uncomfortable real fast. You uh, like kids? You like kids? I do love kids, yeah. How about a five, four, and three? <laughs> you're all, all boys. Don't you know want, if I'm ready for that yet. You want three little boys, five, four, and three? Man, this is getting creepy. You... <laughs> I bet you're just walking around Kansas. Come on, who wants some kids? Come on. <laughs> Uh, all, uh, all kidding aside, though, I did want to say in, in all sincerity, uh, congratulations. This is a great thing. I don't think people realize not only... Really, this is very cool. Not only were you... Yeah. The sad thing is Pender isn't even from Kansas City and doesn't... No, no, that's not... Uh, we... Um, this is an emotional day for him. He's a huge fan. Um, and he's fired after today. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, people don't realize that the, the, the Hall of Fame judges, the sports writers, they're notoriously picky. Joe DiMaggio didn't get in his first attempt. This is your first time around, and they, I think the voting margin was something like 98% or something, which is unheard right. of. So you got to feel great. Well, I was, I was really shocked. Um, the Hall of Fame had talked to my wife, and they said uh, to expect a call around she 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> Why do people call my wife for some reason? But they said, uh, have George be by the phone at 11 o'clock. we got a feeling we'll be calling him. So about 10 to 11, she says, uh, you better go sit, sit by your desk and, and answer the phone. So I go there about 11 o'clock or 10 to 11, and I'm sitting there and sitting there and had some friends in my study with me and next thing you know the phone rings and my heart skips a beat and I get all nervous and I pick it up and it's some guy I know. Hey, have they called you yet? And I'm going, no. They might be calling any minute so I'm going to be brief and hang up. Do you have call waiting? 
Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the funny thing is, because I would get people, call waiting for that phone call. The funny thing is, the phone people were at our house the day before our phone went out of service. Uh, see, that would be very frightening. Yes. No. And so, we had four inches of snow on the ground, and they're d digging holes under my driveway trying to get the lines back in the house. So what guy is calling you at 11? I mean, that must be a, that's an annoying guy. You know, well, he's just, he wanted have you to hear heard it. yet? Yeah. Hey, so, it's raining out. Is it going to rain for long, do you think? So then he so, so I, I'm just sitting there, and I'm, I'm getting a little nervous, and the phone rings about 11.15, and it's somebody else. Have they called you yet? And I'm going, no, I, they haven't. i got to go. Okay. 12 o'clock comes. I'm going, well, they might not be calling. I said, we might be back. I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war. A communications disruption can mean only one thing. Invasion. <laughs> At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have revenge. Begin landing your troops. We haven't much time. The Federation has gone too far. The death toll is catastrophic. Our people are dying, Senator. We must do something quickly. You must contact 